Does your home automation dashboard look like these examples? You're in the right place. I've used Action Tile since 2017, and today I will show you how to build the ultimate dashboard using it. Because we can't rely on voice assistants for everything, and some days I can't rely on voice assistants at all. Hey Google, turn on nightlight. Okay, turning 65 lights on. Sweet dreams, chump. Simply put, Action Tiles allows you to import all of your SmartThings devices into a highly configurable dashboard. Alongside these devices, you can integrate video feeds, weather widgets, and other functions. If you're a Hubitat user, you could follow along as well as the process is nearly identical. If you have another hub, I'm sorry, but it's not supported. SmartThings has over 230 million users and poised to double this growth by 2027. So if you're thinking of upgrading, there's never been a better time. In this video, I will walk you through getting started and adding devices. I'll provide examples of my dashboards and recreate them to demonstrate how you get the most out of the tool, from designing and organizing panels, adding video feeds, weather, and more. By the way, Action Tiles calls these dashboards panels, and I will use these terms interchangeably. In order to import your hub's devices, you will need to create an account at actiontiles.com. Signing up provides you a 14-day window to evaluate the product without any limitations on functionality. If you decide it's right for you, a one-time cost of $28.99 provides you a lifetime license. And to be honest with you, the return on investment will far exceed any other technology you've bought for your smart home. After you create an account, you can get familiar with its administrative features. We'll build on these after integrating our hub. To do this, we navigate to My Locations, Hubs, and select our brand. Regardless of brand, you will be redirected to your hub's account to sign in and authenticate access. And after provisioning access, you will see your hub back in My Locations and Hubs tab. You can expand upon that location to see integration details as well as your scenes, modes, and devices. Hi, my name is Jeff and I'm a smart home addict. Don't worry if you don't have 188 devices. Yet. I use less than a quarter of them for even my larger dashboards. Now that we have our devices added, we could start building a basic dashboard, but to make it the ultimate dashboard, let's take one moment to prepare other resources such as weather and video feeds. Action Tiles is the ultimate dashboard because it does not stop at devices. It allows you to add shortcuts, themes, video feeds, and local weather to your panels. From the menu on the left, these resources can be configured from the top four selections. My panels are where your dashboards are created and saved. I have a unique dashboard for various tablets mounted throughout my house. But you can also create multiple panels for a single traveling tablet. Switching the panel can be as easy as linking a panel from another. For example, I link a living room centric panel and a battery monitor from my hallway panel. My media is where you can integrate weather and video feeds, which I will come back to in a moment. My Shortcuts saves links that can be used to open web pages in a new window or even an iframe tile. I use them to open apps outside of Action Tiles. For example, I can call on my EcoB iOS app from this URL and Pandora Radio from this one. The Pandora link can even call a specific channel if you wish, and this functionality extends to Android as well. In My Themes, you can customize visual and styling cues that panels adopt. When we are building a panel, we can select one of these themes. And relating to themes, it's worth noting that there is a Let It Snow option in app settings for those winter months. All right, back to my media before we wrap up this section. I could have created a whole video on this content alone, but in the sake of time, I will summarize and link the most valuable tips and tricks. Creating a weather widget is relatively easy. For example, this ABC News 7 day weather tile uses a standard URL that can provide a forecast for your area. I will link all these resources in the video's description. Meteored allows you to easily create free weather widgets from this website. I created four of these so I have variations when designing my panels. AccuWeather requires a developer license which can be had for free. It's a bit more complicated but you can get started here. Video feeds are a must-have for any home dashboard. A popular option is to use a cheap, wise camera, but since you have to transcode the stream from a separate device, I found this route inefficient. There are apps for almost any mobile device that will allow you to repurpose it as an IP camera with an MJPEG stream. Back in 2019, I upgraded my home surveillance system and included cameras that provide a compatible video stream. 
My three primary cameras are Hikvision 5 megapixel domes and support MJPEG video streams. My other four cameras are SV3C 5 megapixel bullets, which provide a still image. I use a refresh rate of two times per second for these secondary cameras and have zero complaints. Recently, I've even added an experimental feed of my train of thought. All right, let's get on with the build. All right, so what I've done to get us started here is I have a reference point. This is my hallway hub as it is right now today. And this would be the same as you creating, kind of drafting a reference point. I know that I want, uh, you know, a layout of my house's configuration. So if I'm in the hallway looking at this tablet, I have my girl's room in the back left, working all the way front right. I've got, uh, you know, my backyard uh, before that, my kitchen. So this represents the layout of my house. So to generate this from scratch, to show you all the steps involved, I am going to add a panel here in my panels. And I'm going to call this hallway demo. We're going to add that. Now each panel has its own tile set. We could get into the crafty things later, uh, but we're just going to start with a basic tile set. I don't personally use multiple tile sets for any panel. I have one tile set per panel and it keeps things simple. We're going to call this hallway. And we're going to hide the title of this tile set on the panel. I'll create that. And if I didn't, the title would be appear up here. So now I'm going to go into my selector here. I'm going to go to my panels and I'm going to go to hallway demo. And you can see here we have a blank board. Now thinking again about the physical arrangement, I'm going to start with my daughter's room, which is back left of where this tablet is and work my way right. We're gonna go into hub titles, excuse me, hub tiles. This is where you'll find everything from your hub, from scenes to modes to the devices themselves. And I'm gonna look for my girl's room. To carve out an area for this room, I use a three by one tile. I could have used their main power switch for their lights, but I used the thermostat. So I go to my girl's room door and I add the temperature measurement. You can see I have a nice bright yellow tile, which we will change later via theme. For now, let's go and make this tile a three by one just so we can start getting the general layout of the build. I say three width, one height, and I don't wanna show the battery level icon, it just adds noise. So I'm gonna take care of that right now. And then I'm not gonna use the normal header which would show girl's temperature. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna name it uh, my girl's room. I have two of them, they're twins. All right, we're gonna save that. And we've created our first icon. My office, fortunately or unfortunately, is right next to their room. It's a little smaller, so I'm going to do a two by one for that room using the temperature as well. Add that. And just like that, we are going to go in here again. I don't want to see office door. I would like to see office. And I'm going to make that a two by one. And I'm not going to show the battery level icon. From there, I have my light post. That is a switch. I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna keep that a one by one. And then my living room, I could have done a four by one for my living room, but I wanted additional space on this tile set. Add the living room lights here. And I'm gonna make that a three by one. And name it living room. I have a relaxed theme. And I add that next to the living room. To add another panel, we're going to say more and panel shortcut and then go to my living room. And I'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, so I can see here my scaling is a little bit off. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and there we go. So now I'm mirroring the, uh, the aspect ratio I know is on the iPad. Now thinking about the next line, I'm thinking about my daughter's room and nesting three devices under here. So I have this little container for their room. I'm going to start by adding their lights. This virtual dimmer switch controls four hue lamps that are in there. Add that. Just to keep it clean along the way, go into settings here. And since it's containerized under the girl's room, I am just going to say lights. Save that. I have a wall heater for their room. I leave this on seasonally, not the wall heater itself. 
the option and there's the switch. I'm gonna add that and rename that. Don't need to see girls again. I just say Wahi. I have Keen Smart Fence in each room. You can learn more about them in my automation video. I will link at the end of this video. Find that vent and we're gonna add the switch. And that switch is variable. So I could actually open and close it variably. And just like the other icons, I don't need to see the girls. I could just call it vent and we'll save that. And like I think I mentioned prior, we are gonna change the looks of all these buttons. They're relatively easy to do. I save it to the end. Not only the icons, but the security of them as well. So my daughters can't, for instance, turn on the house fan. That'll be passcode protected. Next, I have three different blind configurations. These blinds are predominantly downstairs. So I have them in the living room. I'm gonna add my blinds day, which is fully open. Favorite, which is dim. And then night, which is closed. Now third row, I'm gonna bring back my reference picture here. I'm gonna start with my right motion. Uh, when I'm looking at the side of the house, uh, it's on the right side of the house, but from this panel here, it's on the left side. So I call it the right motion and put it on the left side. Add my right motion here. There's my right motion. These are one of the buttons I've highlighted in a warning color when it turns on, so I could actually see if there's motion detected at night and then using my cameras, which will be right under it, I could actually kind of zoom in, if you will, to that area to see what's going on, what triggered the motion. cameras I want over here. So we are going to play with this data set a little bit. I like keeping it clean and, and making these changes as I go along to make sure that I'm following suit with configuration. I don't have a big mess later. So I'm going to go into the uh, panel options here and arrange tiles. I can see now it's still following the order. It wants right to left or left to right in this case. So I'm going to start with right motion and then have all my cameras. So I'm going to bring my left, right cameras down after my video feeds. And now I can see I have my right motion where I want it and I just need to clean up the rest of the order here. So after the camera feeds, I want my left motion. And then now I am in place. I'm gonna click done on editing the tiles. And then I add a scene controller. And it looks like I can't search for scene or mode, but we're gonna find that in, uh, in the top here. So clear our search. And then we can say all scenes. Add that. And you can see when we click on that scene, we have an option for all the scenes. Good button to lock down.
I sometimes leave this location blank just so I don't interfere trying to press that button and then open up that menu. As an alternative, I just add my battery manager panel. So the initial build is done here. I've got a very colorful panel, which I am not a big fan of. So I'm going to apply a theme to it. Just to show you that theme, when I go into my themes here, I can go into Slate Gray Hall. And this is where you can select a lot of parameters from the background image to the background color, tile, set header, which we don't use, but also the border width and the radius, space size, these are also good settings to play with if you can't get your panel to fit right in your tablet. And just to scroll down here, you can see some of the colors I use. And I'm guessing my tile background here matches this kind of slate gray, and that's why I've chosen that. And give it a nice clean look. So go back into that panel. We are going to apply that theme. So we're gonna go into panel settings here. So now we're gonna do a little cleanup of things I might have missed and change the icons so they fit the environment. Nothing wrong with my girl's room, office, light post. I like seeing an actual post of some sort. So working from top to bottom here, I'm gonna go into that and I'm going to change its look. 3,000 icons here. For the light post, I use this light bulb and when it's on, I want it to tell me it's on. So I will actually use the warn intention, save that. You can see my icon changed, and when that's on now, I am notified that it's on. The girls from Vent, I use a fan icon. when it's on and the other fan icon when it's off and I like knowing when these are off as well when it is on I just want normal and then when it's off I want worn
And there you have it. We're looking pretty similar to my hallway dashboard. You can see I have a couple things to clean up. I have my weather title here. Go into my media tile here. Deselect that, so we'll see that disappear. I have remaining statuses I could clean up. I don't need to see all the dim levels of everything, um, especially not the battery indicators, which I clean up by just going into that asset. I could see my tile spacing is a little wider, which I could clean up in themes. But all in all, this panel is almost identical to my hallway hub. And I'm just reviewing my notes. The only thing I didn't show you is how to secure a tile. So for example, I don't want my daughters uh, arming our house. So I can go into the monitoring tab here and we go into tile security. I have to enable the panel pin first. So I can click this hyperlink and then I enable it. You have to confirm your action tiles password and then set a pin such as one, two, three, four. We're gonna set that. Go back to the tile. We'll have to go into security here and say pin protected. And now when you click on that, you'll need to enter that awesome password that I generated. I thought I'd cleaned up that MPEG dome. Let's go back into it. I don't wanna see that title header. And that's pretty much it. And just for reference here again, here is the JPEG or the screenshot I took. And we're looking pretty darn good. Well, that's gonna do it. I hope you got something out of this tutorial. If it helped you, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like automation and aren't sick of me yet, check out my video dubbed Six Smart Home Automation Features That Kill. Within, I feature action tiles in addition to more than 20 other automations. Lastly, if you want to see more of this content, please consider subscribing. I'm only just getting started here on YouTube and we have a lot to catch up on.